today's talking point from your official guide to being a good Republican. Talking point number 0201. It's time we put activist judges in their place. And that place is the federal district court. Judge Roger <laughs> Vinson has stepped forward to declare Obamacare unconstitutional. Our only complaint is that he didn't actually use the phrase Obamacare. He called it the Affordable Care Act, though I believe the full name is the Job Killing Affordable Care Act. No matter, <laughs> he shut that sucker down like the Egyptian internet. You see, this here health care bill has something in it called a mandate. I know, that sounds gay, doesn't it? Well, it's almost as bad. It means you have to buy health insurance. And you know what that means? <laughs> You're fully covered in case of accident or illness, denying you your God-given right to stumble into an emergency room and demand that the third-degree burns from your meth lab explosion be treated on somebody else's dime. Not only that, the judge ruled that the mandate... Take it easy there, Koch brothers, in your little Palm Springs resort. The mandate uh. made it so that the whole Obamacare is all unconstitutional. Normally, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. But this baby has pre-existing conditions. So chuck that sucker, just like the founding fathers would have wanted. Judge Vincent wrote, quote, The act, like a defectively designed watch, needs to be redesigned and reconstructed by the watchmaker. You see, healthcare is like a watch. A few folks can afford Rolexes. The rest of you get Mickey Mouse healthcare. And of course, there's going to be about 40 million people who can't afford a watch at all. So as it works out, they don't have much time left anyway. And that's talking point number 020, uh, 202, two, oh, I'm sorry, my watch stopped from your official guide to being a good Republican. <laughs> ah, nicely done, Duffy. Nicely done. Well, I can't read the minds of the founding fathers, but I don't think denying health care to children with pre-existing conditions was a big priority for James Madison or Thomas Jefferson or, uh, you know, uh, any of them. In fact, I think mandating that you buy things was an initial uh, piece of it was it was part of the first days of governance in this country. I mean, everybody knows we've talked about the Militia Act. In 1792, George Washington decided that every male, white male, yes, white male, sorry, uh, between 18 and 45, carry a certain kind of a, a, a musket and a flint and a this and a that and a pouch and you had to have 24, you know, little things here and over here you had to have a quarter pound of powder and very specific about what you had to purchase. Very specific. And on the health care front, uh, there is precedent. In 1798, Congress passed and President John Adams, founding father, signed, not John Quincy Adams, John Adams, the John Adams, signed an act for the relief of sick and disabled seamen. And no, it has nothing to do with Viagra. Okay, this is what it was. It was a law that authorized the creation of of a government-operated marine hospital service and mandated, and not in the gay way, that privately employed sailors, privately employed sailors, be required to purchase health care insurance. Now, that was the Fifth Congress. The Fifth Congress did not really need to struggle over what the Founding Fathers intended or what the drafters of the Constitution intended when they created the Constitution because the Fifth Congress was made up of the Founding Fathers. 